Welcome back, my dear life folks, to another anime-related discussion. If you're a new viewer to my channel, remember to subscribe to become part of the Life Bulb Army. So right now, I am wearing my Midoriya shirt, which I did wear to the premiere of My Hero Academia Heroes Rising. It was such a great movie and very enjoyable as well because I met up with some people, some of my YouTube friends from the Anime Lately podcast, and it was it was just an awesome experience. It was very hyped up. Now, the first half of this review will be spoiler-free, so it doesn't matter if you click on this video right now and watch the first half, but definitely the second half, there will be spoilers. So I'll give you a, a spoiler warning. So right now, um, a lot of people are waiting for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, or some even next week to check out the My Hero Hero Rising movie. Um, some people are hesitant about the movie. They're like, should I watch this? Because they heard there's spoilers here and there. And I'm going to tell you right now, yes, there's some minor spoilers in My Hero Academia Heroes Rising that has not happened in the anime and will probably be shown in season five of the anime. Um, there was, okay, I said minor spoilers. There's a little bit of a big one in there, which I'm going to mention later on in the review when I get to the spoiler side. But other than that, I definitely recommend you watch the movie because it was way better than the first movie. It was way better. The animation held up a lot better. Um, there was like one little animation thing, which it was like no big deal. Literally, it's of something that didn't even really matter. But the movie was very enjoyable. I like that the cast. This is what I like about the My Hero movies. Uh, the, the cast members, the UA members, Class 1A and stuff, they were heavily involved in the movie. They showed that they mattered and stuff, even though there were some lines here and there, which I'm going to talk about in the spoiler side uh, a little later on, uh, which was really interesting. And definitely Midoriya, Bakugo, and the other students, like I was saying, they shine very brightly and stuff. So basically the synopsis of the movie, a little synopsis is that the students of Class 1A, they go to this island to be heroes, right? Not permanent heroes, but he be heroes for a period of time. And then something happens on the island. That's all I'm going to give away with the synopsis because I literally want you to watch this movie. This movie was really good. Now, when you watch the movie, you could bookmark this video or whatever, save this video and come back to it because, you know, if you want to see my thoughts on the movie overall when I talk about the spoilers and stuff, uh, because yesterday I didn't do the review. I was a little too hyped up and stuff and it was kind of late. Well, not really that late when I got home, but I wanted my review to be good. Um, I don't, I didn't want to rush my review. Like, oh, I got to be the first one to make a review or anything like that. So yeah, I definitely recommend the movie. Even if you're an anime only, I still recommend the movie. Um, even though there's, like I said, spoilers here and there. So now let's talk about spoilers. All right, so there will be spoiler talk if you have not watched the movie or if you don't care about spoilers, you could stay. But if you have not watched the movie, you don't want to get spoiled. Um, this is your warning now in five, four, three, two, one. All right, so this is a spoiler section of the review. So you have been warned. Let's get right into it. Now, the big elephant in the room, right, is Bakugo and Midoriya fighting against Nine. Let me talk about Nine as a villain first. Nine is a great villain. Now, something that I missed that that from anime lately when I was watching the movie, this is why it's good sometimes to go to the movies with your friends. Um, he actually did mention when we saw Nine's backstory and he was using his weather quirk and stuff, he said, oh, that's New York City. And I, you know, when you're watching something for the first time, you blink. You always, you're always blinking, so you tend to miss stuff. That's why you, when you rewatch like a movie five, six times, or even two times, three times, um, you get more out of the movie that you're like, oh, I didn't pick up on this before, so I missed that. So basically, that that was really interesting. So nine is probably originally from New York City. I uh, went to Japan. We do know, I believe, All Might is also originally from the U.S. somewhere. That's why he, all his moves literally are like. Um, Detroit smash and stuff like that after the states in New York City. Uh, I said the states in New York City. Sorry about that. I'm still thinking about New York. The states in the United States and stuff. And it's, it's really awesome, right? Nine as a villain, I did like his design a lot. I like his uh, long white hair. It was really cool. Then the suit he had on and then that mechanism that he had as well. Now, the mechanism he had with the purple containers that later towards the movies, they broke, he had it on his back and stuff. I think that was more of a life support system as well because when we first saw Nine in the movie, he was on this truck um, that was being driven by a clone of Spinner and he was on a life support system. So I definitely do think those purple things that he had on his back, they also help him maintain his body because every time he used too many, when he overuses his quirks, basically cells in his body 
they literally they get destroyed um and it puts a big strain on his body and even before he went with the operation uh when he you know when dr ujiko's like hey you want why are you doing this and then he's like i want more power and stuff so be even before that every time he uses quirk too much probably it literally destroys his cells so um that goes back to the quirk singularity thing because in the past nine he only had one quirk and the quirk put such a strain on his body it literally destroyed his cells which is insane yes i keep repeating that you know just to show that quirk singularity theory is still holding up and basic quirk singularity theory let me just um give you a, a quick thing a uh, quick review of it so basic quirk singularity um dr ujiko he basically theorized that over time people's bodies will not be able to handle their quirks because quirks are getting stronger and obviously humans bodies are not evolving at the rate that quirks are getting stronger so you know what happens when the quirk is too strong essentially it damages the user's body and it could lead to death as well aries an example of this nine is an example of this even all for one is an example of this because all for one that's why he funded dr ujiko's research so much so heavily is because he's like all right dr ujiko you know i see the potential of your research because all for one yes he has multiple quirks but it gets to a point where it will have a strain on his body eventually as well. Even if he have, has a regeneration quirk or two, it's, it's still too much for his body to handle. So that's why he funded the Dr. Ujiko's research. So nice character. Uh, I like his backstory. Then later on towards the end of the movie, uh, we saw what happened to him. So basically his whole idea is like there, there can only be one king and stuff like that. Like one main villain like that. That's at the top. Um, and I'm going to talk about that a little later on. And yeah, I like his backstory. I like how he saved Chimera um, in the backstory. And then he was talking about building a world where only the strongest survives. No matter if you're a hero or a villain, if you're strong, you will survive in his world and stuff. And that's what basically his whole idea was. Definitely different from Shigaraki's ideals. Definitely different from... Stain's ideals from the villains we have seen in the past, their ideals and what they were trying to do. And I really like that because if you had said something like, oh, I just want to become the ruler of the world, um, that would have been kind of boring. Uh, yes, All for One was the ruler of Japan for some time in the past until All Might said, all right, let, let me get one for all real quick and kicked his butt into oblivion and then in the rematch and weak and all might still well they were both kind of weakened because all for one is not in his prime anymore but he still kicked his butt once again and then the rest is history he ended up in tartars and stuff so yeah i really like nice ideals um you know as a villain he was really cool um now something that sam from anime lately told me he was like he did not like that you know his suit got destroyed and stuff he would have preferred he had his, um you know his suit and all that stuff towards the end of the movie but like um vash was talking about when we were talking about it in real life he was basically talking about oh you know you see dragon ball z movies and things like that they lose their clothes i like that addition to the movie and while i was watching the movie i was like okay even in my mind i was like okay his clothes are gonna probably get destroyed because the battle is gonna be intense as well and you know you see these giant explosions these giant fights and stuff um i definitely want to see their clothes destroyed because if literally i'm, I'm having a fight and then I'm, I'm getting this hit with uh, Bakugo's quirk over and over again, explosions and things like that. I don't want my, it's not going to make sense for my clothes to be like, oh, no damage at all. Like, it will be like some miracle clothes or something like that. So, yeah, um, it was a good movie. I like the interaction between Tokoyami and Hawk, especially if you read the manga, you know why. Um, that was a really touching moment right there. And then All Might um, towards the end of the movie. It was really cool. One main thing I liked about this movie a lot was that the pro heroes were not there in time. That's a great thing. Why? Because it gave the UA students time to shine. And I really liked that really. I, I liked that so much because I definitely wanted to see the students by themselves take on this villain now originally with the ending of this movie i thought that this movie was going to end where bakugo and midoriya they fought nine together right and defeated it but not in that fashion fashion i thought that nine you know since they learned that um if he uses too many quirks at the same time he keeps using using it you know he it injures his body it makes his body a little immobile and stuff and he had problems with his body because so, his cells you know could keep getting destroyed but now nine just he didn't care. Towards the end, Nine literally was lo looking like he sacrificed his body. He won uh, over 100% probably of his own power. 
and then the tubes and stuff that life support system the purple thing i think that was a life support system or something to help his body you know be mobile or stable he just broke it he broke it and then he didn't care what happened to his body anymore um he just wanted his dream to come true and that's when he fought on um, bakugo and and Midoriya but the thing is I really thought okay they were gonna weaken Knight to a point where Baku and Midoriya together could have defeated him I one I did not expect Midoriya to go to 100% but he did when he went to 100 100%, 100% I was like wait is Midoriya gonna sacrifice his like arm or something because we do know that doctor from UA told Midoriya hey if you use that power 100% like that hey it's gonna get to a point where your body will become immobile you can't use whatever you know maybe your arm your leg that you used it on and Midoriya, once again, breaks his arm with 100%, which I was fine with because I was like, okay, obviously that makes sense because if he's using 100%, he doesn't have full mastery of 100%. He still used it. And I thought that was going to be like the battle. Bakugo and Midoriya maybe have um, a team up against him and then defeat him like that. Like, without... With what happened towards then, I thought that was going to be like the end because Nine was weakened or whatever and then they were going to defeat him. No. The movie just goes on a different direction. So before I get um, more into the nine battle, so I want to talk about Chimera, Slice, and Mummy. So we have Mummy versus Mineta and Toru, which um, Sam, uh, real life, he said, he said, no, uh, no, I think it was Vash. He was like, nobody knows who the Invisible Girl is. I know her name is Toru, but like I said. In my reviews in the past when Toru ever showed up and we can't see her, obviously. I do say, how can I relate to a character? How can I care about a character? I can't see the character. Literally, no matter what you do with a character, if you can't see them struggling in battle and you can, can't see anything, you see their gloves and then they're just falling back. You just, I'm like, no, I, I, I don't really really care a, a, about her that much. But she was there with Mineta. They couldn't do anything against Mummy and Bakugo shows up. Uh, then Baku gets, gets captured by Mummy Squirt, which basically Mummy, um, anything he has bandages wrap around like inanimate objects he could control. And he could he was controlling Bakugo because he wrapped around the Bakugo's hero tools and stuff that he had. And Bakugo broke out of it, defeated Mummy uh, right in the face. He hit him with one of his attacks and that was it. And he called Mineta and Toru extras, which I was like, damn, Bakugo, you don't got to do my boy Mineta like that. You saw what Mineta was doing towards the end of the movie against Nine. He literally was, he was just throwing his crook at the rocks that um, Ochako was, uh, was throwing at them and stuff like that and trying to seal him away. Like, um, he was like a tail Shinjurikin or something like that. But no, nothing worked because Nine was just like, he, he was just spamming. He Nine was spamming. Nine was like a level 100 character. This man said, now nah, I'm breaking the series. So let me go to a level 100 real quick. Nine is one of the strongest villains. Um, if I, in terms of strength, Nine, stronger than Shigaraki, um, he was stronger than Shigaraki, stronger than Stain, stronger than a lot of, besides all for one, stronger than a lot of villains. Why? This dude got all for one from um, the doctor. He got all for one. He was, and then Dr. Ujiko's like, ooh, you're compatible with it. So he had all for one and had not, okay. So he had eight quirks, but was able to use nine. That's why his name was nine. Um, that's, I guess that's his nickname or whatever. Uh, and that was awesome. That was awesome. But then the thing is, we were talking in real life and we were like, wait, but what were the nine quirks? Because I was actually, while watching the movie, I was thinking in my mind, okay, let me count the quirks. So he had that giant water um, water dragon looking quirk. He had that one. He had an analysis quirk with his eyes. Every time he looked at somebody and he saw like their power and like all oh, their powers was rising, that's a quirk. Um, he had the weather quirk. That's his original quirk we could presume. He also had the wind quirk. He had a, I, I don't know, if, I don't think those walls he made were wind walls. Um, I, I think that's like a, I don't know what it is. Let's count that as a quirk. Then he had the quirk with the nails and stuff that he was just spamming stuff with the nails. Um, and that's like six, around six quirks. We saw maybe seven, but I, I don't I don't remember seeing nine quirks in, in general. But uh, maybe when the Blu-ray comes out or something, we'll get more breakdown. Hopefully, we get a breakdown of what all the quirks were um, that were shown and stuff. Because I, I definitely do know there was some quirks missing. I definitely do got to say, I really like Chimera's character design in this movie. It looked awesome. A Chimera, 
It's like from folklore from myth and stuff. And that's why Chimera was really powerful because he had a Chimera quirk. Um, he, he just has the attributes of different animals. So that's why he was really strong. Uh, I don't know what animal he had where he would breathe fire. But that was awesome. But yeah, the fight between Chimera... Um, Oh, I think his name was Ojiro, the guy with the tail. This guy, <laughs> this guy said, yo, it's, it's time for my shot in the movie. He hit him with the tail. Chimera said, get that out of here. Boom, punched him away. I said, damn. And then there was a scene where Cero got knocked back and knocked out. His mask, his mask broke off. I said, damn, like his helmet that he wears. I was like, damn, that's, that's crazy. That's insane. So very, very dangerous fights. Then we had Slice versus Tokoyami and Mina. Uh, that was a great battle as well. A lot of great battles for the first time that Chimera showed up. All the students, uh, not all of them, the, a lot of students were fighting. He was like, get, get this out of here, boom. And then, oh man, Shoji disappointed me so much. So much. This man has like six arms. He goes to fight Chimera. Could he, get, could he even get one punch in? One punch in. I'm like, damn, Choji. Uh, well, it's not Cho it's Shoji. It's, uh, that's not his name. I was like, damn, you could he even get one punch in. Then Ochako got hit by nine later on in the movie. She tried to hit him with a gravity quirk. He's like, nope. Um, that's another thing. Maybe that's one of his quirk, right? He, he, maybe another of his quirk is Spidey Sense. I know that's a joke. This dude, every time people like Jiro or anybody else tries to do a sneak attack, he didn't. He was not even looking at them. He was looking at another direction. And then he instantly blocked it. He knew the attack was coming. So maybe like echolocation or, or something. That was one of his quirk where, you know, it allowed them to intercept um, his blind spot. You know, if anything was coming towards him in his blind spot, he maybe he could hear it or something like that. Maybe that was one of his quirks. But it wasn't really... I, I wish they did mention all, all of his quirks and what they were. But uh, we, we did see a lot of them as well. So... The main premise of the movie, like I said, nine cells, they, they kept getting destroyed every time he used too many of his quirks at the same time, or even in the even before he had all for one as well. So he basically goes to this island where their heroes are, where their students are heroes until they get a replacement because the old hero of the island with the population of 1,000. The island is in Japan as well, somewhere in Japan, um, basically retire. So they're there until they could find somebody suitable. Uh, to to replace that heroes and they're doing like hero work anything um, doing the farm do, doing electricity all, all that stuff they're doing like typical hero work and nine just goes to the island because he knows that there's a kid with a quirk that you know the cell quirk which actually will help him with his cells so they won't burst or they get destroyed he could fix his body up so he only goes there because he goes first is in Japan takes his father's quirk the kid's father's quirk but he's like damn this quirk doesn't work on on me because uh, it, it didn't work on him because it only works on type A blood. So I guess he had type B blood and the kid, um, his, his name was the kid Katsuma um, basically had the same quirk as his father, but it worked with type B blood. So he went to the island to try to take this um, quirk. So let me talk about Katsuma and Mahoro. They're their brother and sister, Mahoro has an illusion quirk. Katsuma like has the cell quirk, and it, it was cool seeing them as well because after the movie, we we're talking a little bit, and we were like, "This is like definitely the next generation because Katsuma wants to become a hero." I see Katsuma becoming a hero, Eri becoming a hero, Kota becoming a hero. Um, if you read the manga, there's another kid, and also in the anime, those kids from the that that class that. Bakugo and Todoroki were doing their provisional hero license training and stuff to get their licenses. Um, those kids, I definitely be, do see them becoming pro heroes in the future. But before that, going to UA, I think they or UA or Shiketsu or wherever, I do see that happening because my hero has so much potential. Even if it ends, they definitely could be a sequel. Um, well, something interesting that one of the people from anime lately mentioned was like. It'd be cool if Midoriya is like an all might in the future where, you know, maybe he retires or something and uh, becomes a teacher in UA. That'd be really cool. Or if he doesn't retire, because we got to realize that these kids are really young still. So by the time they go to UA, Midoriya will be a pro hero for a couple years, but he doesn't have to retire being a pro hero. Maybe he could take a break, maybe a year or two. Since he knows Aerie or Code or what or whoever is going to UA, and it's like, hey, you know, I'm gonna take a year or two um, being a pro hero and teach at UA to see, you know, raise the new generation. That would be really awesome to see. Uh, 
that definitely would be really awesome to see. Now, the beginning of the movie, like I was mentioning, um, there was a little, there was a little fan service, Dobby versus Endeavor. You know why I said that? Um, but that was a Dobby clone, so it, it, it didn't, it didn't really, you know, you know, you know how it is. Then Endeavor did Prominence Burn, which they, they really made Endeavor do a move. That's in the manga. That's not even the anime yet. Okay, uh, that was a really cool move, though. I, I really like the clash between Dabby Clone uh, and Endeavor. That, that was a really cool clash. And there's an anime T anime. I said TV show anime that it's about racing. I forgot. I think it's called Initial D something like that. And I'm like, yeah, somebody was watching that anime before this film um, began because that that I never watched it, but I know it's about racing cars and stuff. Did I? They probably watched it because I, I definitely do think they watched it. So um, there's definitely nothing wrong with that at all. That was really cool. It was cool to see Hawks, um, the voice actor of Hawks as well. Really awesome. We watched the movie in sub. I was scared for a second because the movie before the movie started, we, we we got like a Funimation dub thing. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I do have the original My Hero movie in dub. But uh, majority, uh, I, I just watch it and stuff. I like the sub, sub voice actors. I don't mind the dub as well. But sub, you know, that's what you, you're you used to. If you watch, you've been watching My Hero since season one, like me, uh, when there was no dub in, in in sub all the time. That's what I'm used to. So it, Hawk's voice actor sounded really good. Now, Hawk's voice actor, I did hear the voice actor in dub uh, on Twitter. Somebody posted a clip. He sounds really good as well. So I'm happy with the casting of Hawks, definitely, because he's going to be a major character. Um, later on in My Hero Academia. So, yeah. Also, they in this movie show where where Shigaraki and the League of Villains were at, that's an interesting thing. They show that already. Uh, but, yeah. Back to the thing. Because uh, I don't want to make to th this too long. I don't want to make this, like, 30 minutes. So, let me talk about towards the end of the movie. So, towards the end of the movie, Bakugo, Midori are fighting Nine once again. And, you know, they get hit with lightning from Nine's quirk. Oh, and that's actually one of the quirks of Nine. It was the cell quirk that he stole from um, the kid's dad. It was that um, type A cell quirk. So that's one of the quirks as well. Um, but back to what I was saying. So he, they, get, they, didn't, they, they didn't get hit by the lightning. They used one of their classmates as, as the lightning rod. And they kept fighting. And now, this is where I was like, I did not expect this at all. So they were caught up with um, Nine's quirk, that water dragon looking thing. And when they were caught up in that, so basically, Midori is like, what would all might do? What would all might do? Midoriya's barns is broken. Bakugo is like on an unconscious state as well. Well, not unconscious, but he's still conscious. And then Midoriya says, you know what you got to do. You know what you got to do. I was like, wait, what are these? What is it? In my mind, it didn't register. I was like, what is Midoriya talking about? You know what we got to do. What are you talking about, Midoriya? And then all I see is the fingers come close to each other. I was like, no. I was like, no. I was like, no. Don't do this to us. Don't do this to us, right? So what happened was Midoriya literally transferred one for all to Bakugo, right? I was like, that's crazy. So before I thought one for all could only be transferred through hair, no, it could be transferred through contact. If you, if the one for all user, you know, wants to, uh, wants to transfer it through contact, then that's what happens. So he transferred one for all to Bakugo, and obviously Midoriya still has the embers of one for all, just like All Might had the ember, uh, embers of, of one for all when he fought, you know, had all those battles, and they both go a hundred percent and start fighting nine. This man Bakugo looks like a super saiyan with a hundred percent. Now, the big criticism, right? We were talking about this after the movie. How did Bakugo know how to use 100% right off the bat, right? And was so good with it, right? Because Midoriya went through... Midoriya can't even use 100% normally. He can only go to 20%. But he used 100% before with the help of Eri. But I was like, how? It was, the thing was, movie convenience. I, I, that's what I said, movie plot. That's why. But... Like we heard in the past, basically, All Might said, if you don't train your body and you go 100%, your body could get, just blow up from the, like, cause too much power. This man, I know Bakugo trains and stuff, but not, for, not for this, not, not for one for all. And his body didn't blow up or anything like that. Um, so 
It was a hype moment. I did not expect that I was smiling. People were cheering in the movie theater. I was like, wow, that's insane. That's insane. And then Bakugo's quirk explosion was getting amplified, getting stronger because he has one for all. So he was literally melting rock. Rock, like doing this and melting it because his quirk got in hand. He's 100%. He has two quirks. I was like, what the heck? That was big fan service right there, right? Um, I think somebody, a YouTuber made a video about um, Bakugo being one of the users of One For All. And I never watched that video because some people are like, don't watch that. Like Me, I was like, that. I, I should have watched the video, but I was like, that doesn't make sense. What? But in the movie, it happens. He becomes one of the users, right? Um, and they fought nine. They do like this big combination attack and then they, they just defeat him, right? But the thing is, after all this is said and done, Midori is crying. He's like, goodbye for now or whatever. You know, he's sad because one for all is gone in him. But no, that's not the case. A miracle happens. So the explanation they give in the movie is that Bakugo didn't inherit one for all from Midori because he will, he became unconscious during the battle. So he was probably fighting unconscious. That can happen, by the way. Like, if you're unconscious, like um, boxers and stuff like that, if they become unconscious, you know, even if their eyes are open, their instincts take over. That's probably what happened with Bakugo, and he could still keep on fighting. But then the thing is, um, I would have rather a better explanation than that. It's cool because I was like, how are they going to do another movie? Me, the reason doesn't have one for all anymore. He's not going to be like um, one of the heroes from Vigilantes or, or My Hero Vigilantes or anything like that. No, so that was the explanation. A better ex explanation, like all my said, miracle happened. Um... I think a better explanation would have just been like, look, um, one of the users of One For All, even if they didn't, didn't say this, like made it happen so he could transfer the power for a couple of seconds or, or however long that fight lasted toward when that happened, like a couple of minutes. That would have been more interesting to me uh, because we do got to realize the original quirk of the first user of One For All was to transfer the quirk One For All because uh, All For One's little brother had a quirk already and then when he gave him another quirk and mutated into one one for all but um it, that explanation i don't know but the bakugo stuff uh it, this is criticism right but this is a movie plot because i don't i don't want to do, be too harsh on, on what happened it was a hype moment nevertheless but yeah that was the thing about the movie it's like uh, uh, I, I don't really know too much about how i feel about that aspect of the movie and yeah, what before even when Minoria was like, you know what we gotta do, I'm like, what is Minoria thinking about, right? I was like, is he talking about fusion from Dragon Ball? Like that literally popped in my mind. Like, don't tell me there. <laughs> like, I know that was not gonna happen, but I'm like, damn, um, that's crazy. So yeah, this was a really great movie. I really did um like the movie. And then towards the end, Minoria tells the kid, hey, you can be a hero too. That was um, reminiscent of season one, uh, the first chapter of My Hero Academia as well. Uh, when All Might told uh, Midoriya, you can be a hero as well. So great movie, great, great movie. I really enjoyed it. Towards the end was crazy. Uh, <laughs> I am a little critical about the Baku 100% stuff still. Um, overall, I'm going to rate this movie a solid, solid 8.5 out of 10. And I don't know what the next My Hero movie is going to do to that. What can it do to surpass this? And then the other thing is like, uh, they got to keep coming up with different villains for the My Hero movies. And nine um, out of the movies we've seen, well, this is two movies in, nine is the best villain out of the um, the My Hero movies we've seen. And it's funny because I was talking about, uh, we did a little video and I was like, we need a Samurai movie. And then everybody looked at me like I was crazy. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this one and remember to have a great day. Peace.